again, everyone. Dave Benson here, Senior Advisor for Threat Mitigation and Global Operations for the Center for Personal Protection and Safety. I want to have a quick chat with you this morning on something that has become more and more prevalent uh, in the workforce. And even with the hopeful winding down of the pandemic, uh, the concept of hybrid workforce work from home is not likely to go away, uh, at least completely anytime soon. So what I'd like to share with you is some thoughts on, as leaders, managers, supervisors, organizations, um, how we can be more aware of the potential for uh, work environment violence, uh, particularly from those folks that work from home or in a hybrid environment. You know, the various types of workplace violence are not defined by the manner of violence or even where it occurs. That's why we at the center like to talk about work environment. It's the real or perceived relationships between offenders, their victims, sometimes significant others. In a work from home situation, relationships with other employees, whether it be supervisors, customers, family, friends, or others, particularly such as abusive partners, does not end when someone stops working at the office and begins from their living room or dining room table. Uh, we need to get out of this idea that somehow, if you're in a brick and mortar situation within your organization, uh, we have more responsibilities, we have more things to be concerned about when we talk about potential violence prevention. Because in reality, all types of workplace violence may still pose a risk to work from home employees. You know, behaviors of concern like bullying, harassment, threats of violence. Remember, it doesn't all, all, always have to be carried out, that act of violence. Threats and violence even of itself uh, can be easily made in a work environment. In some instances, more e easily than in face-to-face uh, -face encounters. A determined aggressor uh, is going to focus on where uh, the target that they have found of their aggression and of their frustration is. Uh, and if it's at home or a hybrid environment, uh, we as leaders need to be aware of that and also make sure that our staff and our stakeholders understand uh, what are some of the things they can be doing uh, to make themselves more safe. So in fact, violence can come right to someone's doorstep. We all know that physical violence can range in a spectrum from a push or a shove to actual brandishing weapons to actually involving weapons and actual physical violence. Um, and while a gun violence we spend a lot of time about within the workplace per se, and within sadly within our schools and with other organizations or places of business or within our communities, um, an individual can be targeted in a work from home environment. In fact, it would probably be a much more specific targeting than if the uh, individual that was intent on committing violence uh, had a beef simply with an organization or a group. So let's make no mistake about it, uh, active assailant events can happen in private homes. We don't think about that very much. So what are some of the work from home risk factors that, that I see and I'm sure many of you have seen? Um, so there's a number of them, uh, not the least of which complacency. I'm working from home. I'm sitting in my sweatpants. I've got the cat in my lap. Um, my door is locked. Um, I'm still carrying out my duties. Uh, I feel much safer in this environment. And so there can be a real bias cognitively uh, when we think about those things. But in fact, uh, problems can occur in the, in the residential environment. In fact, most residences are considered a soft target uh, with minimal physical security. Now, we're not going to advocate here that you turn your homes or your hybrid workplace into a fortress. But what we are going to do uh, is remind you of some of the maybe extra stressors and other situations that you have in a work from home environment that in fact you may not have uh, if you're back in your uh, traditional workplace. So you've got dependents, you might have elders, you might have an abusive spouse, 
Um, lots of different issues, depending on where you are and, 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 and what the circumstances are. If you're in a call center, for example, um, that's a highly, potentially highly volatile situation where people routinely complain and we're thinking they don't know where we live. And no, most of the time that's true, but we need to ensure that that's the case. And if someone knocks on the door that poses a threat, what do we expect our teammates and our colleagues to do? There's also more distractions around the home. And so uh, you could be ignoring what we call in my business as a threat assessor, pre-incident indicators of potential risk or violence. So how can we as employers or leadership uh, convey this concern without empowering them to um, uh, be mindful, not fearful, but at the same time, uh, take some of these situations into, uh, uh, into effect. So first of all, consider work from home specific policies and procedures. Think of it this way. Uh, if, if someone was coming to your orientation and they were working on your campus or in your building or in your organization, you're going to talk to them about emergency access and egress. You're going to talk about how to report things if they have concerns. You're going to talk about what's appropriate behavior and what's inappropriate behavior. And we're going to train people uh, to be aware of these things from a readiness and then Lord forbid a response if it's necessary and then a, re a recovery standpoint. So follow through, but don't make them a hybrid policy if you can help it. Let's dedicate this with some of the same uh, bullet points, if you will, for work from home specific policies and procedures. Training is extremely important with an emphasis on those of us that work from home. And so while some of the concepts are gonna remain the same, what is workplace violence? Why is it important? Um, you know, what are behaviors of concern? Uh, how do you report those? Who do you report those? And what you can expect from the organization? We need to um, merge those into more of a work from home specific environment. Another thing that always is the case, and here at the center, we've been talking about empowering individuals ever since I can remember, but that emphasis on personal accountability and responsibility for one's safety. You're, we always say that uh, you are a, a, your stakeholder in your own safety and security. It's not just your organization. It's not just the security department. So instilling this in people when they work from home, uh, hopefully will empower them to begin to think about some of these things in a different way. In addition, how are you going to report situations that might be that concern you? Whether it be behaviors of concern with folks you work with, you might see it in a virtual call. We've seen a real rash of um, attempted violence and an actual uh, targeted violence uh, via virtual Zoom-like calls, if you will. Uh, how are they supposed to behave? What happens if they see something that concerns them? what to report, how to report, and who to report it to. Extremely important because certainly in a virtual environment, we're not seeing everybody in person every day. So some of these things can be put on the back burner. And unfortunately, one of the things I know about intentional violence is that if it's left unchecked, it's never going to stay the same. It's almost always going to escalate and often with tragic consequences. Um, emphasizing to your remote workers that they are at least as susceptible, and in some cases more susceptible, uh, than, than their colleagues in the traditional workplace to potential uh, hazards uh, and uh, you know work environment violence. From a leadership perspective, understand that no one, I repeat, no one is immune from either the risk as we've seen during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, or uh, endemic risk of workplace violence. No one is. That's why we don't um, have a profile of what a workplace violence perpetrator might look like. Uh, we have some characteristics that we follow, but we focus more on behaviors of concern, changes in behaviors, triggers what causes maybe an individual to go from thoughts to actions to commit a violent act. And so, um, we need to knock down the stovepipes just because they're not sitting in the office doesn't mean, number one, that you as an organization doesn't have responsibility 
um, for their safety and well-being, particularly uh, involving their work-related functions. And then two, um, they need to be aware and even more diligent in some ways to let us know because we don't have the infrastructure in place uh, like we do oftentimes uh, on our campuses or our organizations or buildings. So by talking about the possibility of violence affecting the home, um, it affords uh, these individuals working from home or hybrid workers uh, to focus on some of the same precautions, identify some potential gaps or things, and then get back to you. It should be an ongoing dialogue. Finally, being vigilant. Uh, there is no one place, regardless of the physical security, and you hear this a lot, if we turn our buildings or our schools or uh, our, our campuses into armed camps, that uh, an act of inten intentional targeted violence won't occur. That just isn't so. We might be able to mitigate it. But it's the best way to mitigate this is to recognize it, the recognition piece, the readiness piece, which is training and empowering people to be aware, have a stake in their own safety and security. And then, goodness forbid, if we have a situation where they're in the wrong place at the wrong time, or we have admittedly one of these very rare but devastating acts of targeted uh, violence, such as uh, mass shootings, they need to be trained to be aware what to do, even when they're in their home or out traveling in the community. So in the final analysis, when we're talking about recognition and responding uh, with uh, work from home situations, it still comes up to the three R's, readiness, response, and recovery. Thanks very much for your time, and we'll see you next time.